What, uh... what an awesome event, huh? Sun is shining down upon us. Um, 23rd annual. Incredible night last night, even though it rained. Uh, Penn Staters come out. Uh, the community comes out. Our friends come out. Our neighbors come out. Just a uh, fantastic evening uh, last night. Raising money, raising awareness, celebrating uh, Chris Rollis, who five years ago was really struggling. Now he's running in races and he's engaged. So a lot of positives um, from last night. And obviously, we're over $3.2 million. And to be able to receive that award, which most of you covered here, um, I made sure they knew it was a we thing. Uh, we did this, this community did it, Penn State did it, the committee did it, the sponsors did it, PSECU, can't say enough about them. I was golfing with them today, uh, Barb came out, um, she was amazing, just uh, we had a ton of fun. So we have a new goal, new goal, it's $4 million. We're going to keep this thing as strong as ever. You know, I don't know if you know this, but this year is the most golfers we've ever had in 23 years. And that should say something to all of us, right? Like. It affects us every year in some sort of way, family, friend, associate, co-worker, and Penn Staters keep showing up. And there's a ton of ex-basketball players here. Obviously, Bruce is here who, who kicked this thing off. And to be where we are today, I couldn't be more thrilled. How many golfers are there, roughly? Uh, what is it, 300, over 300? But how many foursomes? What's it, 70, 75. 70, uh, last, last time I heard it was 77. So. Whether guys dropped out because they had too good of a time last night, I don't know. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. They already paid. <laughs> when you take a job, you take over a lot of these responsibilities and events that you know were there before you get there. Did you ever imagine that it was going to turn into this? You know, eight nine years ago. You know what, Ben? It's a, it's a good question. No, uh, you, you, when I came into this, you just don't know what, where it's going to go or what turns it's going to take, and to see it thrive the way it is, it's just a lot of great people. You know, I'm just the front man. The committee has done a fabulous job. Uh, I think it started with Ken, and then it went to Al, and now it's Scott Walker. The committee is just unbelievable what they're doing, their organization. And it's just not last night and today. It's all year long, five or six events all year to help us raise awareness and to help our friends and neighbors and coworkers, which is, which is ultimately what you want to do, put a smile on somebody's face. Can you talk about the way the kind of community rallies around us with all the businesses and a lot of local people kind of pitching in? Yeah, as you drive up this, um, what do you want to call it, driveway, I guess you can call it, with all the banners that are out of all the local sponsors, again, they don't have to do this. They choose to do it. And we've, we've gained more sponsors because they understand now the magnitude of all this. Yeah! What's up, Coach? How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Miles Dredd, looking good, look at this. This is when we trim down and this is the time we hit the weight room Absolutely. and we eat well and do all the right things. Absolutely. Stay over there, because yes, they'll talk to you next. Yes, uh, so anyway, the sponsors are awesome, so we appreciate that. So segueing to, to, to the team, what does it mean uh, to get Lamar and Mike back for next season? And you know, what are your prospects now as you look forward? Yeah, I, I think we all watched how the Final Four unfolded with older teams succeeding. And I've never had an older team since I've been here, a more experienced team anyway. And I feel like we have that this year with, uh, I thought Lamar made a really mature decision because maybe he didn't make the one that's popular. Um, you know, maybe, maybe he goes two way, maybe he goes to the NBA, maybe he figures it out somehow, some way. But he made a, one, a lifetime decision to, to get his degree and to take Penn State to to new places, new heights it hasn't seen. Same with Mike Watkins. He easily could have graduated, maybe gone somewhere else, maybe just went overseas, maybe just started his professional career. He's also embodied what Penn State's all about. He loves Penn State. You guys see him everywhere. He's out, always smiling. I think we get an older, wiser, more mature Mike Watkins. With those two cornerstones, if I can call them cornerstones, our culture, our foundation is in a really good place, building off those two guys. With Miles here, I see John Hara behind me, Trent but Buttrick's around here somewhere. I think there's a lot of positives about Penn State basketball right now. Does it say something about, just after last season, you know, some of the ups and the downs, does it say anything about the buy-in uh, for those guys to make those same decisions? You know what, if we don't have the culture or the foundation, if we don't have a great locker room, and you guys know this, if we don't have that, Lamar's not coming back, Mike's not coming back. If you look across the country, what's going on in basketball today, men's basketball specifically, what's going on with nearly a thousand in the portal, that's all year long, it's mid-year transfers, that's everybody, okay? It's so easy to say I'm out, 
it's so easy to say, I'm taking a, a different road, let me go somewhere else. And those guys and this team, only 14 and 18, are saying, no, we're close. Let's come back. We have those shared experiences now. Let's learn from those shared experiences and let's utilize them for next year. What was your Lamar timeline in terms of when you found out? Did you find out more or less the same time everybody else did? I'm assuming not. But. So um, really, I worked closely with Lamar since that decision <laughs> to um, that opportunity to go and work out for NBA teams and, and, and the new rules of hiring an agent, all that good stuff. And I just stayed in communication with them. I reached out to NBA teams as well. So it was a process. It was new for us. So I wanted to make sure I supported him. So he called me the, the night before and says, you know, it looks good that, I, that I'm coming back. But then, you know, you get that text, just, you know, uh, but I want to hear all the, the but, I want to hear all the information from the agent first. So I had to hold my breath there for about seven or eight hours. Um, but it, it ultimately worked out. And, and again, incredibly intelligent young man and great, great family, great parents that believe in what Penn State's all about. What can Lamar benefit from this, this next year and how can that kind of help him in pursuit of his pro basketball dreams? Well, the legacy he can leave is going to be incredible. What he just took from all the NBA teams he worked out is going to be great for him to pass that wisdom and knowledge to these guys over here to my left. That, that's going to be important. And now he gets to take a shot at the NCAA tournament. He gets to maybe be the all-time leading scorer. He gets to, um, you know, maybe take for maybe a Big Ten championship. Who knows? Um, but there's so many more benefits for him. And develop. We're number seven in the country. Develop another year. Work on that shot another year. The people around you got older and wiser too. They're going to be that much better. So the benefits, I believe, and I think he came to that conclusion as well, outweigh the negatives here. Is Seth Lundy a big winner here to, to be able to learn under Lamar and maybe not be thrown into fire? Mark, great, great point. I 100% agree with that. If if Lamar were to would have left, now Seth's thrown into the fire, and now he can learn from somebody. He can learn from Lamar. He can learn from Mike. Understand the Big Ten a little bit more. Understand Penn State. Understand me, uh, the way I conduct my practices and my player development and the demands that I have for everybody. I think Seth Lundy. I think Abdu. I think Pat Kelly. They're really going to reap the, the rewards from those two guys staying because Lamar didn't have that. Tony Carr didn't have that. They didn't have that, that older statesman to say, hey, I've been there, I've done, I've won 26, I'm a first team all, first, uh, first team all Big Ten player. This is what I can tell you. There's been some, a lot of talk about players who have left, either graduated or transferred, but how much does Isaiah offset that maybe a little bit? He's a guy that I don't think anybody's really talking about yeah. all that much. Which is surprising, um, and you've been around the program, specifically you guys, and you've seen our practices, and you know how good Brockington's gonna be. And I thought my staff and I did a really good job of preparing for departures. That's why you brought in a Brockington a year ago, have somebody sit out, learn underneath us, you know, get bigger, get stronger, understand what Penn State is all about, the Penn State model, the Penn State way. And I think Brockington has every opportunity to start this year. The way he can jump, the way he can shoot, the way he can score, the way he can defend. Uh, I'm really excited about that group of guys that are going to lead this team. Is he the best fit you've had of guys you've brought in that weren't recruits? Yeah, I, I, that's a good point. Of, of prior transfers or, or fifth-year guys, yeah, I think he just fits the mold of everything we're looking about. Because if you look at Josh Reeves and everything Josh Reeves did for us, his speed, his athleticism, uh, his ability to defend multiple positions, I think Brockington can do that for us. He's more offensive-minded than Josh. I don't think he's going to go 1,500, 300, 250, but I think he's probably going to score 1,000, and he better get 500 rebounds, I can tell you that. <laughs> Where is Jamari at, speaking of guys that are a little bit like Josh? What's he up to? This Jamari is at home right now. He's working on his shot. Um, he's working hard, you know, changing his body, really maturing, taking an online class. He'll be here uh, this weekend. Uh, a bunch of the guys, most of the guys are coming back over the next two weeks. So summer session two is going to be a lot of fun of developing these guys into what we need them to be and what they want to be for, for, the, for the future.